Unique Pointer is basically a fancy wrapper built around new and delete, and I don't use dynamic allocations, so I don't need Unique Pointer, is what you might have said before you watched this video. Part of that is true. By default, a Unique Pointer is just a convenience wrapper around new and delete. It's referred to as a Smart Pointer because it takes care of calling this delete so you don't have to remember to. Unlike with the X Pointer, the Y Pointer gets deleted automatically. But in this video, I'm not here to tell you about the basics of Unique Pointer. If you have no idea what a Unique Pointer is, please see my previous video on the topic. We write a basic implementation of it in about 50 lines. And if you already know what a Unique Pointer is, you don't need to watch that previous video. I mean, unless you want to. In this video, we're focusing on Unique Pointer's lesser known second template argument, the deleter. When a Unique Pointer is destroyed, it doesn't just call the built-in delete on its managed object. It actually just passes its raw pointer to its deleter. It just so happens that the default deleter calls the built-in delete. But theoretically, you could put pretty much whatever you want there. Let's take a look at a classic example, interoperability with a C library. As much as we love C++, there are times when an existing library that's already written in C is a better choice than rewriting something in C++. But C doesn't have, and probably doesn't want, smart pointers, so it's very common for library functions written in C to just malloc some memory, put something in it, and then return the pointer to you. And oftentimes, it's up to you, the caller, to free that pointer. Because the pointer was allocated using malloc, we need to delete it by using free. We can't use the built-in delete. Therefore, we also can't just use unique pointer the way we normally would. By default, unique pointer uses delete, not free. So instead, let's define our own custom deleter. We define a call operator that the unique pointer will call when it's destroyed. And instead of calling delete, we call free. Just throw your custom deleter class in the second template argument, and you're done. Now at the closing curly brace, the malloc pointer will be freed. You may be wondering why I wrapped free up into a class that has a call operator with the same signature as free. It's actually for efficiency. You can directly pass in the free function like this. Instead of using our free deleter class, we could use the decl type of the free function. This decl type is a function pointer type, and we're storing the value free in that function pointer. Because the unique pointer actually stores its deleter inside of itself, this means that it's storing an extra pointer. So if we go ahead and print out the size of the unique pointer, we see that it ends up being 16 bytes, which is the size of two pointers. On the other hand, when we use our free deleter class, we don't specify the second argument and it just gets default constructed. But a free deleter instance doesn't have any state. Standard library implementers are very smart and they do a neat trick here. Because the deleter doesn't have any state, they don't store it. So as you can see, the unique pointer ends up only being eight bytes, which is the size of just a pointer. This is what allows a unique pointer to have basically no overhead compared to a raw pointer because when you do it this way, it's just syntactic sugar that gets all compiled away. Now, the free deleter is something that you might want to use over and over again, so it makes sense to give it a name. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're only gonna use this deleter once, you can go ahead and just put it directly in the template argument using a lambda like this. This tends to make things longer and can quickly become unreadable, so use with caution. On the other hand, if you're using these unique pointers of free deleters all over the place and you find it annoying to constantly write this out, then you can use an alias. We use the using keyword to introduce the alias. And now we just have a C-friendly unique pointer that uses free instead of delete. Personally, I often go one step further and define a C++-friendly wrapper around the C function. The wrapper just calls the underlying C function and wraps it in a unique pointer. Doing it this way, there's nothing for the caller to forget. They don't need to remember to call free, they don't need to remember to wrap the result in a unique pointer, and there's no question about whether they got back an owning pointer or a non-owning pointer. It's a unique pointer, so they definitely own it. And this pattern doesn't just apply to heap allocation functions like new and malloc. Anytime you have a resource that doesn't clean up after itself, you can use a unique pointer with a custom deleter. If a C library gave you a file handle that was opened with fopen, you need to close it with fclose, you could use a deleter for that. You could even use it with a custom allocator. I'm using standard allocator, which again just calls new and delete, but fill in here your favorite stack-based or arena allocator or whatever here. We use a lambda to define our custom deleter, which just calls deallocate, and we just pass that in as the second template argument and second argument of the unique pointer. The default allocator is stateless and doesn't do any work upon construction, so it's most efficient to just construct one right here. 
Because our deleter is stateless, once again, we just have an 8-byte pointer. If your allocator is in stateless, then you're going to need to capture it somehow. In this case, I'm capturing it by reference. In this case, the unique pointer needs to store that reference to that allocator, so it does increase the memory usage. So keep that in mind, this is actually a case where unique pointer does have overhead. You can get around this by using a stateless allocator or by storing it in a global variable. Now to the technical part, how do they actually implement the deleter in unique pointer? We're not going to be looking at the standard library implementation, it's basically unreadable. But although this is not by any means a complete or probably even correct implementation, it does carry all the main ideas in just a few lines of code. If you want to see the basic implementation that doesn't even have a deleter, then check out my previous video where I explain the whole thing. So for this, we start out by adding the deleter template argument. No surprise, we create a default delete class that just calls delete and set that as the default value for the template argument. Unlike the version that used free on the pointer, the version that uses delete needs to be a template. This is because while it's possible to free a void pointer, it's not possible to delete a void pointer. Okay, once we have our deleter type, then we just go down to our private members and add in a deleter member. Then in the destructor and reset and in other places where you might expect delete to be called, instead we call the deleter passing in our member pointer. We do an if check here because although the built-in delete can handle null pointer, not every deleter can. Then there are just a few other things that need to be changed. We add convenience functions like adding a getter for the deleter. And then pretty much the only other thing that needs to change is constructors. We added a deleter member, so we just need to make sure that all of our constructors initialize it. But keep in mind, the most common, convenient, and efficient case is this one when we have a stateless deleter that does nothing upon construction. Pretty much nothing else needs to change, and now we have a fully functioning unique pointer class that even supports custom deleters. Unfortunately though, this implementation has one fatal flaw, which we'll see when we try to run our example again. When we run our example, even with the stateless allocator, we see that our unique pointer is taking up 16 bytes instead of 8. Because the allocator is stateless, we don't really have anything to store, but for some reason it's still taking up 8 bytes. This is because, except for special exceptions, an object must take up at least 1 byte, so that's 1 byte for the deleter, 8 bytes for the pointer, and it takes at least 9, and this class is 8 byte aligned, so it ends up taking 16 bytes. But if you remember, standard unique pointer only took up 8 bytes in this case. So how can we achieve that? If you have the great luxury of working with C++ 20 or later, then you have no unique address. Or if you're on Windows, MSVC, no unique address. Maybe they'll implement it without the MSVC in the future. But with no other changes other than adding this no unique address, we're back down to 8 bytes. The no unique address attribute allows data members to overlap. In the case of a stateless deleter, allowing it to overlap means it doesn't take up any memory. So this is a hugely important attribute to become familiar with, it can really really improve the data compactness and efficiency of your programs. But remember, I said you can only do this if you have the luxury of using C++20. But standard unique pointer works in C++11. So that means they're doing something a little bit trickier. They use what's called the empty base object optimization, which is a clever trick involving inheriting from your deleter and explaining that would be its own whole video. So comment below if you're stuck on C++17 or earlier and want to hear about it. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank Pi for becoming an exponential tier patron on Patreon. I really appreciate the support and encouragement, and I'm glad you think the videos are worth it. Everyone else, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.